Hey guys, it's time for part three of Let's Build a Tank. Let's get to work. Let's get started. This should be fun. So um, I've got sprues here ready to go on the bottom hole. And the instructions state that we are to begin work on the hull and the suspension arms, which is how, by the way, most armor builds um, begin. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be snipping off um, these uh, suspension arms, uh, the rear idler adjustment, um, this part here which attaches to the uh, uh, front of the hull, which is where the transmission differential or the main drive gears go. So let's get started on that. So the first thing I want to do is we on our hull here. And I want to point out, if you look here, there's a little, little plastic nib, and I want to get rid of that. So I can use this blade, uh, but I'm going to use all the tools that I have at hand. And I have... Um, a little chisel blade that I'm going to use out of my Swan Morton here. I'm just going to change this blade out real fast. This won't take just a second. This is a real simple maneuver. Just Oop, there it goes. Now. Uh, let me apologize. I uh, forgot to recommend some tools in my previous video that are essential modeling gear. And uh, most of you guys that are, are experienced have probably figured it out. But you need some of these. You need sanding sticks and various grades. And uh, they're really essential. Uh, you gotta have them. So I forgot to mention that. You gotta have sanding sticks. Now, I've got a little spot there that I need to get rid of, a little rough spot, and I'm going to sand that down. And I can use my sanding stick if I want to, but I bought some new Tamiya sanding sponges the other day, and I just happen to have uh, a little piece cut off here, just about right, sand that down. There we go. So that's all done. And then we begin to cut off the suspension arms. And the instructions say, well, you know what? I'm going to do that little piece there B6 and B7. And what I'm going to show you now is the use of the sprue cutter. I need the sprue number B. Bear with me a second. There we go. So I want this part right here. You guys can see that. I'm going to cut both of these off. So take my handy to me a sprue cutter. And here we go. This is what I'm doing. So check this out. As I do this, it allows me to get right next to the part. Snip. Snip. That falls straight down there. Then I'm going to remove the other one. So it cuts it pretty close. Now you'll notice that as a result, let me grab something to help the camera focus. You'll see there's not a whole lot of excess plastic now to trim away, just a little bit with my knife. And I'm going to take care of that here just momentarily. Now there are ejector pin marks on this, um, but I don't need to worry about that because uh, there will be parts installed over this and they will be not visible once the part, all the, everything is installed and in place. So what I'm doing right now is I'm removing that little tiny bit of excess plastic 
from where I trimmed it off the sprue. You can see now, hopefully, that's what I've done. It's cleaned it up. And I'm going to take a medium grit standing stick and I just want to hit that ever so slightly. Take the rough spot, rough spot off the plastic. That ought to do it. And now let's attach the part. You always do a little dry fit. So it fits right there just like that. And for this, I am going to be using my tester cement. Um, let me explain why. So this cement, as opposed to the Tamiya Extra Thin, is a thicker liquid. And as it bonds and dries, it, uh, I think, is a little stronger bond. And uh, on my suspension parts, I typically will use this cement because... Uh, it, the weight of the tank, the weight of the model is going to be supported by these suspension parts. Now, specifically on this one, it won't, but I just, since I have so much bearing surface, in other words, I've got so much surface area that's going to be in contact with this model, I'm going to go ahead and it's flat. I'm going to go ahead and, and use the tester cement, so I'm just going to place some here with the applicator. Okay, and I haven't used this in a while, so it's clogged. And I just happened to be lucky enough to have a little piece of two millimeter brass rod here that I bought for to use as track pins on Friel cast metal tracks. I'm just going to clear that obstruction. Hopefully now we will be good to go. Yep, there's the cement. Just put a little bit of a bead down there. backwards. that into place. Now this cement takes a little longer to dry than to me extra thin dries within seconds. And yes I mean seconds. I'm putting the other side on. But it's gonna make a really nice firm bond. Now I want to point out, you'll notice I now have a seam here where this part joins into the hull. It's in pretty much all the way. Uh, I don't need to worry about filling that seam because once my final drive housings are installed, you'll see we've got one there and one there, uh, you won't be able to see the seam at all. So it's, it's not a problem. Not a problem. So that's on. And now this next part is going to take a little while. So I've got all these suspension arms that I have to remove from the sprue. So I'm going to do this um, work one side at a time. I'm going to take these off and uh, uh, clean them up and attach them. And then I'll come back and I'll show you what I've done. So I'm going to pause it, guys. See you in a bit. Hey, guys. Back again here. Um, I just wanted to show you something. Um, and what I'm going to do, I just thought it was critical. Well, it's not critical, but I wanted to show you this. So if I look at this suspension arm, so I cut these off the sprue. This is for the uh, right-hand side of the hull. I hope you can see this. There's a mold line right, right along that arm. And you can see it on this side as well. I'm going to remove that. Um, you could probably make the argument that you may or may not see it. Uh, but, you know, I want this to be a clean build. So I'm going to go ahead and remove it. So just a few swipes from my sanding stick. Ought to take care of that. So I'm going to get back to work on this. I just wanted to share that with you. Take care. Be right back. Hey guys, back yet once again. And here it is. So this should be uh, the completion of step number one in the instructions, which was all of the torsion bar suspension arms, the idler. Uh, this is the track tensioning tool. Um, this allowed the crew to increase or decrease the tension on the, the tracks in the field. There's a 
uh, hex head fitting on the back of this thing. They had a tool to do this in the field, so uh, that's what that's for. So you look it's pretty nice. Um, so this, what you're watching, it took me roughly 20-30 minutes to do this. So I've completed step number one, and we we are going to be going to step number two. And step number two is uh, continues with the lower running gear, adds the transmission housing, the differential, main differential, scape hatches, and return rollers. And then a shock absorber, uh, which is uh, attached to the back wheel, and then a back hull plate. This step won't take too long. So once again, I'm going to do uh, cut away parts, clean them up, install them. I do. I would like to note, if you would, please take a look here. There's a little plastic poly cap. That's these little things here that go inside this main differential housing. Uh, that's so that the uh, road wheel or the uh, excuse me the drive sprocket will rotate which makes it easier to install the tracks when we get to that phase of the build so coming along good uh, I'm gonna shut off again I apologize for that because this is boring for you guys just to completely watch me work so when I have something relevant to add I will certainly uh, uh, come back on and, and share that I do want, there's one little thing that I want to point out so I used um, the tester cement on all these parts except for this little guy here uh, because of um, it's pretty much just a surface part. I use the Tamiya Extra Thin on these, but the rest of it, this is all testers. Now there are locator pin marks on the inside of this hull here, and I will actually go ahead and shoot some tester cement to the back side of this for the same reason that I mentioned earlier, just to kind of strengthen that bond. Uh, because you don't know who's going to handle the model, uh, you don't know what's going to happen, and it's nice to have the suspension and the running gear a little sturdier than normal. To me, it's done a really good job engineering this kit. I don't anticipate any problems, but uh, that is a little something extra I do with the cement from the backside. That, that, of course, is where the locator holes are. Anyways, moving on to step two. I'll check in with you guys in a bit.